Hello and welcome to the course of HDL Digital Circuit Design. Today's topic is Verilog code for clock divider. Myself, Shilpa Rudravar, Assistant Professor, School of ENTC Engineering, MIT Academy of Engineering, Anandi Pune. So, moving towards today's topic. So, what is meant by clock divider and what is the use of it? So, clock divider is a circuit or a code we are writing which will be converting your high frequency clock into low frequency clock. So here I can say CLK which is my main clock which is having high frequency. It can be 10, 100 megahertz, 60 megahertz, whatever it may be. And I'll be converting that clock into low frequency clock which will be uh, 1 hertz or whatever the required thing. And for that my input to the clock divider will be clock as well as reset and my output will be divided clock. So clock underscore D will be getting instead of the DIV consider this as a clock underscore D. So high frequency clock is converted or uh, converted into low frequency clock. Now what is the rule? Why you require to divide the clock? Suppose we are writing a code in Verilog for the counter which will be counting from 0, 0, 0 to 111 and that I need to see it on the hardware and whatever the RTX 7 board we are having it operates at 100 megahertz frequency. So whenever I am going to implement that counter on a FPGA board, the clock frequency will be 100 megahertz and my counting will be very fast. So it will be counting from 000 to 111 at a very high speed and that way I will not be able to see the transition from 000 to 001, 001 to 010 and that's why I re require to slow down that frequency and that's why you need to write a code. So whenever you are writing this clock divider code, so your main clock will be this, your divided clock will be this and this divided clock will be given to your counter circuitry so that the transition from 000 to 001 you will be able to see it on the hardware. So this is the reason we need to write a Div uh, clock divider code. Now here you are able to see the simulation result of clock divider where clock is the main clock we are giving. So this is the clock which is getting generated in simulation. This is the reset and this is the active high reset meaning of that my circuit is going to reset when reset is 1 and normal operation of clock division is happening at reset equal to 0. So at this period clock is there, reset is 1, so it will not be performing any operation so this will be 0. So you are able to see this as a 0. But whenever the reset is 0 and at the clock, positive edge of clock, your clock is getting divided. So you are able to see for 4 clock cycles of your main clock, you are getting 1 clock generated. That is clock underscore D is having 1 clock cycle for 4 clock cycles of your main clock. So in this way, we can say our clock is getting divided. So this particular part you can change for two clock cycles it will be generating one cycle that is also possible and for that for that what you need to do is to change this particular part of your code if this particular value is higher that is one two three four so you will be getting that way low frequency clock and if this is less that is uh, 0 over here so it will be generating that way high frequency clock so meaning of that whatever this is the main clock you are having this divided clock you will be getting depending upon which bit you are writing that is of divided underscore count so moving ahead with the actual code here it has been written module end module and in between that the clock division code is written so this is what is the name given to that uh, module that is clock underscore div uh, div inputs are clock reset and in out we have mentioned it as a clock underscore d now in this case for this code you can mention clock underscore d as a out also but if you are using this same clock divided clock to the other code of counters suppose then you need to mention it as a in out because it is the output of your this main clock because clock is getting divided and that is the output but same way this divided clock is acting as an input to your next code of counter and that's why you need to mention it as a in out otherwise only for this code you can mention it as a out only hope you understood that particular point of in out now rage 
this is the data type we have taken as a range and we have taken one variable which is the div underscore count which is of 29 bit now why it has been taken and what is the role of that with the clock division i'll be telling in the coming ppts so always add this is the behavioral modeling style we are writing that depending upon clock your uh, positive edge of clock your clock should be divided now begin if reset equal to one it will be performing resetting operation your output will be zero that clock is not getting generated and that's why 20 9 bit of your div underscore count we are making it as a zero so meaning of this reset means we have to make everything zero so what is we are having that is the div underscore cnt that we need to make zero so we are assigning zero to all 29 bits of div underscore count because we are counting that from 0 0 28 times to 1 1 1 1 28 29 times sorry so that way we are we are counting so if reset is zero it will be performing normal operation of counting and then clock is getting divided so at starting reset is one it will be zero all the 29 bits of div underscore count will be zero and else condition when reset is zero it will be performing counting operation so your this div underscore count will be counting from 0, 0, 0, 0 that is 29 times 0 to 29 times 1 that way it will be counting now in this particular block your clock is not getting generated only it is counting your value of div underscore count from 0, 0, 0, 0 to 1, 1, 1, 1 up to 29 bits but when you are writing end and you are writing this assignment statement displays a important role of dividing a clock so assign that is the keyword in the data flow and what you want your clock to be divided so clock underscore d for that you are assigning the value of first bit of your div underscore count so these are the 29 bit out of that first bit of this i'll be assigning to this particular clock underscore d and that way clock is getting divided now for more detail i'll be moving ahead with this document here the same code i have copy pasted and whatever i have explained now now moving ahead with this particular part where you have taken range 29 bit which is uh, variable is div underscore count for the simplicity instead of taking 29 bit i'll be showing ahead uh, with the 3 bit so this is the range where div underscore count i have taken it of 3 bit what is the meaning of 3 bit so div underscore count sec second bit first bit and zeroth bit so as it is of 3 bit i'll be having eight options so from 0 0 0 to 1 1 1 that eight options i am having so my counter whenever it is counting it will start from this all zero so here i have considered 28 times zero so here you can consider three times zero so 0 0 0 and whenever it is counting that is count plus one so it will be counting from 0 0 0 to 0 0 1 that way up to 1 1 1 so hope that particular point is clear now once that has been uh, happening here assign clock underscore d equal to div underscore count of one now here what is div underscore count of one that is this particular column this is my first cycle this is my second cycle for first cycle of this clock positive edge of clock it will be counting 0 0 0 for second clock it will be counting 1 for third clock it will be counting like this that way for eighth clock it will be counting 1 1 1 now over here it has been written that clock underscore d will be assigned value of div underscore count of 1 so here you are able to see at first clock value of div underscore t of 1 will be 0 for second it is again a 0 for third it will be 1 for fourth it will be 1 so this particular value i'll be getting that i will be getting 0 0 1 1 so here you are able to see that this is my first clock this is my second clock so for first clock output is 0 for second clock this is again a 0 now this is what is the positive edge trigger of your clock and this is my third clock is starting so here you are able to see the third clock and what is the value of div underscore count of one that is one and that's why your clock underscore divided is going from zero to one now this one will be there for again up to this and that's why fourth clock your output will be one at fifth clock it will be zero so it is move, move from one to zero again for six clock it will be zero that's why it is zero 
again for 7 o'clock it will be 1 so this is 1 again for 8 o'clock is it 1 so that way your clock is getting divided now you are able to see as this is 1 over here for 4 clock cycles of your main clock you are getting 1 clock cycle and that's why we are saying that your clock is getting divided by 4 means suppose this is 100 megahertz frequency here i'll be getting 25 megahertz frequency clock now suppose this is 0 over here Suppose instead of this particular statement, the divided div underscore count of 0 bit is mentioned. So, meaning of that, your clock is getting divided over here. So, frequency will be somewhat uh, higher than this one. So, you are able to see for two clock pulses of your main clock, you are getting one clock of clock divider. So, you are able to see this is the one clock, this is second clock, and this is third clock. So, I am getting over here for my two clock pulses one clock and this is the second clock for two clock pulse of your main clock i am getting one clock so my clock is getting divided by two so suppose this clock frequency of main clock is 100 megahertz i am getting 50 megahertz clock over here so just by changing this bit you can change your clock frequency so hope these things are clear in your mind so moving ahead with this particular point so this is the reason why we need to change this particular bit same way i have explained for the 3 bit you can go ahead with the 28 bit now why 28 bit or 29 bit has been taken because clock is very high for the hardware that is 100 megahertz clock frequency is there and to see your execution of your counter suppose which is operating at that frequency which is not possible and that's why in visible range it should be there and that's why you need to divide that by near about 24 or 25 or 26 bit and that's why this should be of 29 at the max you can divide it by 28 means this bit you can mention 28 because you have mentioned this range as a 28 if it is 30 maximum you can write 30 so that you can vary according to your hardware what is the frequency of clock you are having and how much you need to reduce the frequency so this code has been written now how to write a test bench that is very important meaning of test bench is to generate a test input to the unit under test so code you have written for the clock divider and you need to generate an input and that input of the clock dividers are clock which is the main clock and reset so here this is the range whatever are the inputs are acting as a range over here in the test bench and what are the output that are acting as a wire here so that we have mentioned then we have uh, in initiated instantiated that unit so this what is the uut in the uut you have mentioned clock and this is the test bench clock so we have connected your main clock of your code with the clock of your test bench same way reset to the reset and clock with the clock underscore d now you need to write a test bench where you need to generate a clock you need to generate a reset that way how to write it so this two clock and reset you need to generate concurrently parallelly and that's why we have written two initial blocks so this same particular part is getting copy pasted over here so it is not uh, uh, written twice just uh, keep that in to mind now initial begin end this is the first initial block and this is the second initial block so this block is generating clock and this block is generating your reset as already in the previous sessions i told you all the initial blocks executes parallelly but whatever is done inside that executes sequentially and that's why initial block and this initial block will execute parallelly so i'll be getting this clock and reset waveform parallelly but internally that loop is executing sequentially that's why you are getting 0 1 0 1 over here in clock and over here you are getting reset as a 1 and 0 for more time now how to write a code initially i have written that clock is 1 because i need to start from somewhere that clock is 0 or 1 so that has been written now i need to generate this clock continuously as a 0 1 0 1 and that's why you need to write this keyword as a forever forever means it will be continuously doing the things after this 10 time scale so you are able to see hash 10 so this particular task is getting repeated every 10 cycles or 10 time scale now which uh, part is getting repeated that already we have seen clock is 1 now after 10 time scale 
this clock is getting complemented so if that is one not of clock that is approximation sign is there that is it is complementing the thing so as it is previously one was there now it will be zero again after 10 time scale it will be again one likewise it will be repeating the thing and that's why you are getting this clock signal getting generated once that has been done now as this is the active high reset so it will be performing resetting operation when reset is one and for normal uh, whenever reset is zero it will be performing normal clock division thing and that's why i want to make reset as a zero for longer time period and that's why over here you are able to see reset is one for smaller time scale and reset is zero for higher time and that's why this 1000 time uh, delay is given so this is my second initial loop so once that has been written you will be getting this particular waveform that is getting generated so hope this particular part is clear that why there is the need of clock uh, divider why you need to write a uh, code for that and how to write a test bench and what is the concept behind uh, generating the clock or how the clock is getting generated so hope the things are clear in your mind thank you everyone and happy learning in the next session we'll be executing that on vivado tool so happy learning thank you